Protocol, as earlier mentioned, is um, observed. So, <clears throat> a very good morning to all of you. Um, allow me first to thank both the president and this chief and the CEO of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Uganda for the invitation to officiate at this 27th annual ICPAU seminar. Although I'm told you are 30 years. This is the 27th annual ICPAU seminar. Uh, the Institute has um, shared a long standing and a profound relationship with Bank of Uganda, particularly in the areas of training, capacity building, and advocacy for improved financial reporting across the industry. It therefore gives me great pleasure to speak to all of you this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the call to increase resilience is hardly new. Following the global financial crisis of 2007 to 2008, the policy arena has featured increasing calls for resilience. Now though, the chorus has even become almost deafening as a result of the global COVID-19 pandemic and the current shocks that are related to the geopolitical conflicts, particularly the Russian-Ukraine conflict, and importantly, the climate change. I therefore applaud the Institute for organizing the seminar under the topical theme, Resilience in a Dynamic Environment, which resonates very well with the current times. In simple terms, resilience is the ability to rebound. Now, in the famous poem by Jean de La Fontaine, titled, quote, The Oak and the Reed, unquote, it provides a metaphor from nature which gives a clear perspective on resilience. The oak tree is robust, it's mighty, and um, it looks indestructible in the face of normal and strong winds, but it breaks down when the storm becomes too severe. Once it has fallen, no recovery is possible. By contrast, light breezes bend the reed. But when the strong storm erupts, the reed declares, I bend, but I do not break. That phrase incorporates the essence of resilience. The reed, always in motion, might look vulnerable, but it bounces back when the storm is over. It's much more resilient than the oak because of its ability to rebound. So, the global COVID-19 pandemic presented us with the first major test of the post-financial crisis reforms to regulatory standards. Here in Uganda, we stress test our banks rigorously for safety and soundness to ensure that they could support the economy through the hard times without breaking, like the oak. Indeed, we tested to make sure that this support could continue through even harder times, and the answer was positive. The resilience built up through the prudent macroprudential policy over the years following the financial crisis put the financial system in a better position to absorb the shocks from the COVID-19 pandemic. This matters greatly because having a resilient financial system meant that businesses, including lending, could be uh, sustained even during a pandemic. We went further to provide accommodative uh, policy measures to ensure that the financial institutions had access to liquidity even as they restructured the performing loans that had been
badly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. In managing a pandemic, a mix of ex ante and ex post policies and instruments ensure that the financial system behave like the reed tree instead of like the oak tree. Interestingly, experiences have shown that in most of the developing countries, they tend to have more of ex post policies and instruments in place relative to ex ante. So in other words, in more developing countries, we just like firefighting rather than fire prevention. The pandemic showed us that it was time to change the thinking as the shocks ahead will be easier to absorb and manage if the fundamentals are sound before the fact. In fact, we are now, or we now need to ensure that we are ready for new challenges, perhaps by building better for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, they need to be mindful of the environment in our efforts to increase resilience cannot be overstated. As we all know, climate change is already having a profound effect on our planet and the extreme domestic weather conditions in the form of floods and droughts over the past few months have heavily impacted the local communities here in Uganda and the nation at large. For example, as a result of the drought, we've seen food crop inflation hit 16.4% in the month of July 2022, from the loss of 0.7% observed in February this very year. So in a span of about six months, food crop inflation has gone up from 0.7% to 16.4%. Today, Ubos will be releasing the inflation numbers for August. We don't know where the food crop inflation is going to be. So inevitably, trans transitioning to an environmentally sustainable low carbon economy will have significant implications for the financial system. As a central bank, we have increased our own focus in this area within our newly launched five-year strategic plan, particularly in relation to financing of a sustainable economy. We shall be working with financial institutions to promote ESG standards in our financial sector to positively impact on long-term sustainability in the value chains of our economic sectors. By incorporating these sustainability issues, the bottom line of the financial institutions will reflect the creation of shareholder value beyond profitability. So the question is, how much more can the governance structures of the financial institutions move away from the interest of the shareholders' value creation to value creation of the communities and society? So as a matter of fact, I was ecstatic to read the Institute Feedback Report from the 2021 Financial Reporting Awards, which strongly recommended sustainability reporting at the Central Bank. I also understand that the Global Accountants Fraternity has already put up this agenda at the forefront with the formation of the International Sustainability Standards Board to spearhead the development of global re reporting standards for incorporation into the accounting regulatory framework. The accountant will therefore have a very critical role to play here, not only at the central bank, but also across all financial institutions, public sector entities, and other businesses. So in promoting ESG aspects into the financial sector activities, the concept of governance also comes to the fore. The promotion of good governance practices is not only important at the private sector level, but is also critical at the public sector level as it promotes economic resilience. Research has shown that accountable public authorities who pursue just distribution of benefits to enhance adaptive capacity of vulnerable groups and societies. The auditors and accountants have a critical role to play in uplifting good governance practices. This is through, among others, 
ensuring that boards and their committees are well constituted and are operational with robust risk management frameworks and business continuity plans in place. The role of auditors and accountants should, in fact, go beyond this. They need to get more involved in validating business risk assumptions and models, testing them for robustness, and ensuring that they are frequently recalibrated. Additionally, they need to be more involved in the preparation and review of all the business continuity plans. Consequently, with strong oversight of governance in place, resilience of the nation, its businesses, and people against unforeseen shocks will be augmented. The other key message in our theme today touches on the dynamic environment that we live in today, which is being powered by technological innovations. Financial technology, known as fintech, is reshaping financial services in Africa through providing us with the infinite possibilities to achieve shared and inclusive growth. We have all witnessed the transformation that mobile-based payments have had in the region. First, it was with the Kenya, uh, with the M-Pesa, and now, of course, we are seeing what is doing in Uganda with what we call the mobile money. Our role as industry leaders and professionals is to make sure that the possibilities that come with fintechs continue to be explored and effected. That fintech firms provide products that are solving actual problems, that the services are priced fairly, and that consumers are protected. An SCCA survey, global survey, released in May 2022, showed that Africa has a major role to play in fintech, and that it was a region that placed the most trust in fintech products relative to traditional financial services. Ironically, it also showed that Africa was the most concerned region about consumer protection and cybersecurity risks. The survey therefore brought out the need to prioritize data management and cybersecurity at the heart of the frameworks of government and regulatory approval of digital products and services offered by the private sector. For the private sector, this implies investment in infrastructure, staff capacity, and customer education to show up the defenses against this emerging threat. Without such investment, we risk losing this high confidence and trust placed in fintech products in Africa. As a central bank, adapting to this changing financial and risk landscape will remain a priority over the next five years. Our interest will be on policy development to enable safe, long-term uh, value from fintechs in a way that places financial inclusion at the core. The benefits of innovation must be shared across the population, particularly with the disadvantage. Initiatives on internal capacity development, supervision of disruptive technologies, especially in our payments ecosystem, enhancing consumer protection, promoting data, driven decision-making and uplifting innovation through innovation hubs and regular sandboxes will be critical. Like most central banks around the world and in Africa, the concept of digital currency shall also be acutely studied with input from industry and experts and other stakeholders. Now, I see a critical role for you, accountants, in maturing of the fintechs. As the scale and significance of this field increases, there is need for robust financial management and reliable, independent assurance of information to drive trust in this field. These are relatively the early stages, and the opportunity is there for accounting community to be part of shaping this evolving event. I also understand that the International Federation of Accountants, um, who we shall be hearing from later on in this seminar, or this, um, yeah, this seminar, has put in place considerable resources to support member organizations to make the most out of technology. 
I thank them for these progressive efforts and encourage our institute to leverage on such resources to be in a better position to navigate the dynamic environment we find ourselves in, particularly with the growth of fintechs. Ladies and gentlemen, although COVID-19 pandemic and current geopolitical conflicts have generated a, a dizzying series of harsh political, social, and economic firsts, such shocks will not be the last. These shocks have had a significant influence in reshaping the way we work through remote working, the way we meet, virtual meetings such as this one here is a hybrid, and the way we transact through the e-payments. While we cannot anticipate every type of shock, we can adjust and continue to build resilience to enable us bounce back. Benjamin Franklin says that, quote, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail, unquote. Resilience is what prevented the financial system from failing during the pandemic and is what is keeping the system afloat in the current challenging economic environment. We need to continue working together as industry leaders and as professionals to build both financial and economic resilience for sustainable growth that ensures socio-economic transformation. As I wrap up my remarks, allow me quotes from the Bible. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 16, says, quote, For though the righteous shall fall seven times, they shall rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Unquote. Colleagues, let us prepare well and reflect the ways of the righteous and not the wicked. In doing so, let us be mindful of the following verses in the same chapter. Proverbs 24, verses 17 to 18. Quote, Rejoice not when thine enemy falls, and let them not, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbles. Let the Lord see it, and displease him, and he turn away from his wrath from him. Unquote. So, as accountants, let us do all it takes to help others from rising in their falls and their stumbles. On that note, and without further ado, it's my honor and privilege to officially open the 27th annual ICPAU seminar under the theme, Resilience in a Dynamic Environment. Thank you very much for having me, and I'm wishing you all fruitful deliberation. God bless all of you. Thank you. No. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Michael Atingiego. Another round of applause, please, for him. And there you are, you have it. I think the key takeaway for us is working together is what will sustain the resilience. So let's all 